Aquarius 19, a forest fire quenched. The challenges that we meet on the earth plane are significant and considerable, and we came here to deal with them. This is our soul's purpose here, is to actually face the hardness, the harshness, the emergencies of life. And usually that's domestic, that's routine. We have to do what's necessary to put food on the table, to raise the kids and to cope with all of the things that come up around that. And that's tricky, that's the big challenge. To be a householder is, is no small thing. And to raise a family and to do that with consciousness is, is a big deal. So that's the nature of our challenge on, in life. And then there are some times which are intense emergencies. And that's what we're discussing here. How do we cope with emergencies? And um, some of us cope okay, and some of us do not. What's the difference between being able to cope with emergency and not? And it, it really has to, a lot to do with just focus of attention. If you clearly see exactly what's happening, then you can respond appropriately. If you allow yourself fear and anxiety and, and, and so on, then you actually won't see. You won't see the problem, you won't see the solution, you won't see that you do have the resources to cope. Because even though, of course, in emergencies very often there are dire consequences, um, the purpose of the emergency, as far as we're concerned, is to, to measure our response. What do we do in an emergency? And we don't know until it arises. We just don't know. In wartime, of course, there's emergency all the time. And people often look back to the time of war with fond nostalgia, bizarrely even throughout all the hardship and danger and discomfort, nevertheless, they found something of such importance that they look back on that time, and some say it's the best time of their lives. Asked why, they respond because of the, the community spirit. Presumably these are people who have not yet found the warmth of community and needed an emergency to pull people together in order to find it. And that's what we do in an emergency. We pull together with those who are around to help. We affirm our common humanity with strangers. And we pull together as a team without much high relief of ego. So the job itself is so important that the personality becomes of no concern. Our ability to work together and form a group and to deal with external challenges binds us into a higher state of being. If we expanded that idea fully, we'd come to understand that humanity on this planet is most likely to experience itself as a whole getting to the group consciousness of being a human. Really, only when there's an external challenge that's threatening to us all. Now, perhaps some people might suggest alien invasion would do the job. And yet we have at hand, with the, the COVID emergency, exactly that now. The way the story is told, this disease is threatening to that level where all of us are subject to the threat of this attack. And we, we look around to see whether or not the, the impact of that has bound us together into group consciousness. And of course, to some extent, yes, and to some extent, no. So that's what we're discussing with this particular degree. The outcome of dealing with an emergency satisfactorily is quite profound we get a sense of renewed vitality. We're great, feeling great to be alive if we've survived a life-threatening moment. We're feeling that we've done our duty to the community and we've 
share this experience with good people. And, and all of those feelings are very powerful, deep and lasting. Many people look back on such a moment um, as the defining moment of their lives. So it's a very profound thing. And this, this broadening of social responsibility that goes with it is the process that we need to mature our sense of who we are as not only an individual or a member of a family, but we're also a member of our community and by extension, a member of our species. And this consciousness of identifying ourselves as more than just one person is of, of prime importance on the spiritual path. We need to understand that we're not just individuals, we're also components of a group with group consciousness. Um, the other thing it does do is, is develop within us a huge, hugely improved level of confidence that whatever is coming up in the future we can deal with because we've dealt with what's just passed. And if we have that confidence that we can deal with the future, certain fears, anxieties just recede. And we start to understand that there's no need to worry about what has not yet happened and what may never happen, so that we can focus our attention on the here and now. And when we do that, when we actually learn that secret of focusing only on the here and now, then we have mastered a hugely important spiritual lesson. So we could say, in a sense, that without emergencies, we don't learn to focus on the here and now, because emergencies are immediate and urgent. We have to focus on what's exactly happening right now. And if we don't have an emergency, then we tend to drift into nostalgia, the past, and plans for the future. We, we move away from the moment in hand, and so we, we lose consciousness. So this is an exercise in, in learning how to stay focused. Mm -hmm.